It's a very known fact that out of the troop types in Rise of Kingdoms, infantry have the worst equipment. Their equipment set is really just a bunch of garbage. So today I'll be making an infantry equipment guide, going over three different types of infantry equipment and showing you a stat breakdown for each so you can decide which set of equipment is the best one for your account. So if you're looking to maximize your infantry equipment value, and maybe you're interested in the set that I personally think is the best, you want to stick around till the end of the video. Now let's start off today by diving just straight into the infantry equipment, just getting right in there with no extra shenanigans. And we're going to start off by going over the Eternal Empire set, which is just the baseline infantry equipment. This is if you just took the legendary set of equipment all the way up to the six piece set bonus. And the stats are going to be on screen now, as I did with my archer equipment guide, I will do this for every single set of equipment which we do talk about. The Eternal Empire set, if you don't get any special talents on it, you're looking at 47% attack, which is a ridiculous amount of attack, 29% defense, and also 10% march speed, as an extra stat from your four piece set bonus. That is really what you're looking at with this infantry equipment and it is definitely the worst. There is no health at all on the infantry equipment and the defense is kind of lackluster. In terms of attack though, it's got the most in the game by a very large margin. So you can see the Eternal Empire set, it's really built on getting a ton of attack. And the reason that is the case is because when it was released, if we're being realistic, a lot of the infantry commanders already had a lot of health, especially for the time. So there were a lot of tanky infantry commanders who had health or were just super tanky and didn't really need health. Commanders like Constantine had 40% health. I mean, it's ridiculous numbers. So health wasn't very useful for them, but attack back then really was. But in the current infantry meta, if we look at a lot of the current commanders, they've got a fairly large amount of attack. I mean, Liu Che, he has got a fairly decent amount of attack he's got 20% just in his skills and then he's got a bunch of normal damage bonuses etc but then even commanders like CPO he's got 40% attack I mean you can clearly see infantry are shifting or have shifted already towards a more attack dominant meta which makes sense but it means that the normal eternal empire set isn't the best because the way stats work in rise of kingdoms you do get diminishing value so if you're looking at 47% attack for the set of equipment, it is pretty bad. There is one thing we should note here, the four piece set bonus giving 10% march speed is actually pretty nice. So I don't mind that at all. We should note though, in total, the infantry set has 76% of stats. And when you add the march speed, it's 86%. So we're going to look at it as it is 76 since we're looking more at base stats, but don't forget the march speed is technically 10% more stats. But often when it comes to March speed, you don't get low amounts of it. So it's really 10% or 15 or 5%. So I'm not going to really count the March speed in on this set. Otherwise, it would technically be the best by stat percentage. But that is definitely something we should consider. If we looked at the Eternal Empire set as a talented set, it's going to have 60% attack, which is insane. 37.5% defense and still 10% March speed because special talents don't change set bonuses. This means that when we do look at the infantry set of equipment with a special talent, you're looking at 97.5% total stats, or with the march speed, 107.5. So it's a decent number of stats, but once again, it's a majority attack. There is a ton of attack in that set, no health, and I would say a little bit above average defense. Now moving on to the typical infantry set, you can see it in the top left corner as well. This set of equipment consists of the KVK helmet, the KVK weapon, so the sun, Hammer of Sun and Moon, the Helm of the Conqueror, and then you've got the Hope Cloak, and also you're using the Eternal Knight Leggings, and then you've just got e Eternal Empire Gloves, and also Eternal Empire Boots. This is the typical infantry set. I see this one probably the most. It is the one that is built into the tester as the other open field option besides the just whole entire normal set. And this set consists of 25% attack, which is definitely quite a difference compared to the previous Eternal Empire, and it also has 57% defense. That is a really, really high number of defense. I'm going to say it comes a lot from the Helm of the Conqueror, giving you 15% defense, and then the Hope Cloak giving you 12%, and the Eternal Knight giving you another 12%. That is a lot of defense to be giving a set of equipment, and that's definitely the key stat here. 
When we look at the total amount of stats, there is only 82% total. So technically, it's 4% less than the Eternal Empire set. Because with the Eternal Empire set, if you include the March speed, it is 86%. But if you don't include the March speed, which once again, we won't be doing today, you're looking at it having actually 6% more actual stats, which you can use on the open field. Since I find infantry are already fast enough, you don't really need this extra march speed because once again, the Lilith has definitely shifted the movement for infantry. A lot of infantry commanders nowadays have some form of march speed. I mean, Alexander the Great, I know he's older, but he's got 30%. Liu Che, he might have a little bit. Yeah, he's got 20% in here if he's using only infantry. Scipio has got a ridiculous amount. He can get 25%. So there are a lot of infantry commanders with some form of march speed in their kit. So the march speed on the infantry equipment from the previous Eternal Empire set it's not as needed, so we should keep that in mind. And that means the typical infantry set, which is what I'm going to call it, is actually better than the just Eternal Empire baseline set. Because with the typical infantry set, you're looking at a total of 82% stats with 57% of it being defense, which is much better than the 47 attack from the Eternal Empire set. If you do talent the typical infantry set, you're looking at 32.5% attack, which is around average. I know the archers set for the Dragon Breath is around 32% attack, somewhere within that range. So that is actually not the worst amount of attack to have. And then 74.5% defense, leaving you with 107% total stats. That is a very, very large amount of stats. That's probably the most you're going to get if you run that typical infantry set. But once again, we do have no health in it. There is one more set of equipment which I will discuss. This is a set of equipment which is going to include health, and it's very similar to the Archer set of equipment I've discussed before, which includes a little bit of the leadership pieces of equipment. We're looking at adding in this set of equipment the leadership legs, so the chassis of the Glorious Goddess, and also the leadership boots. On top of that, we're probably going to be adding, instead of the normal set of equipment, we're going to be using the sacred grips because this is technically 0.5% more defense than the Eternal Empire, and we're not running any other Eternal Empire pieces. So sacred grips is going to be a slight bit better. After that, we're going to run the Hope Cloak, and also we're going to run the KVK Helmet and KVK Weapon. So that is really the set of equipment which we're looking at right now. And this one's got a little bit more unique stats. When we look at this set of equipment with the two leadership pieces, you're going to have 25% attack. That's mainly coming from the infantry KVK Weapon with exactly 25% attack. Then you're going to have 38% defense, which is a mixture between the Helm of the Conqueror and also the Hope Cloak plus the Sacred Grips. And finally, you're going to get 14% health out of this, which is going to be mainly on the Chassis and also the Boots of the Greaves of the Glorious Goddess. That's going to leave you with a total of 77% of stats. Do keep in mind, there is no March speed and there is nothing completely spectacular about this set in terms of extra stats you are getting, except the 3% defense from the Glorious Goddess set bonus. If you do end up talenting this 222 set, which is what I do like to call it, it is going to leave you with a total of 100% stats on the dot, which is quite interesting. It's going to be 32.5% attack, or from the KVK weapon, 49% defense between all your defense giving items, and then 18.5% health from the Chassis and Greaves of the Glorious Goddess. So this set of equipment is going to leave you with 100% total stats. Now, if we're looking to do a comparison of these sets of equipment, and we'll look at both their normal sets, so without the talented bonus and with the talented bonus, the Eternal Empire set has the most amount of stats if you include the March speed. It is going to be about, I want to say, 4% total stats extra compared to the other sets. But if we don't include the March speed, it is actually the lowest in stats. So if you don't include the March speed on the Eternal Empire, because it is kind of an outlier, you're looking at this set being 1% less stats than the 222 set, and it being around 6% less stats than your typical infantry set with the Hope Cloak and the Eternal Knight, and then just running the double Eternal Empire sets with the two KVK pieces. The typical set is technically the most on stats. It is going to give you a total of 82%, and that means without the March speed on the Eternal Empire, it is the most amount of stats. It is also going to give you the most defense, but keep in mind, both the Eternal Empire set and the typical infantry set, there's no health in them at all. You've literally got no health in that set of equipment, which can certainly be a massive issue for a lot of players. 
And once again, a lot of meta infantry commanders nowadays are not including health in their kit. I mean, Leo Che has literally got no health in his kit. And there's even commanders like Orgo who don't have any health on the open field. I mean, she's got some when she's in a garrison, but as an open field commander, she's got no health. So these things are definitely important to consider. The infantry meta seems to be moving away from health and being tanky and moving more towards dealing as much damage as possible with a new smite meta. Even William, when we looked at his skills, he only has 10% health. I know that is some amount of health, but 10% is a lot less than a lot of other marches, which means a William Liu Che, which is going to be the most popular infantry march, I reckon once he releases, it's only going to have 10% health. That is less than archers if you run the 222 set on them, because archers also have a very similar set of equipment. I'm running part of it on my Boudicca right now. And this set of equipment already has a total of 26% health, 14% for any troop and 12% for archers. So infantry are very much lacking on the health in terms of their equipment, and it means the commanders who don't have as much health nowadays are also lacking on it, which is why I'm gonna say, and this might be controversial, but I think the 222 set of equipment is going to be your best bet. Infantry commanders nowadays do not have the health that they used to. And unless we see some very health dominant infantry commanders, which it doesn't seem like they're heading that way, this 222 set of equipment, which is on screen again, is going to be your best bet because you're going to get 14% health out of it if nothing is talented. That is a really, really decent amount of health to be getting out of some equipment. And then that means infantry will have around a meta amount of health. It is still going to be like 2% less than an archer march that has the 222 set on it because the archer march here, let's say in total, has a total of like 26%. And then if you add William on the infantry, they've only got 24%. But that is still a very decent amount of health to have for the open field, and it is definitely a usable amount. So the infantry equipment, very much lacking on health nowadays, means I want to say it's worth getting that 222 set and running that on the open field. Other than that, I think the typical infantry set is still very, very good. So if you are running that set of equipment, which is on screen, this set still definitely works. The 25% attack isn't overly like invested in attack and 57% defense. Defense is always fairly good for the field since we often see most infantry commanders or really just most commanders in general, the max stat you get is usually in attack. You usually get the most attack compared to any other stat type because it's just really, really easily accessible in your crystal tech. That's definitely something we should keep in mind. Infantry get attack, archers get attack, every troop gets attack in there. And then also your alliance technology is really, really heavy in on attack. There's infantry attack here, there's a bit of defense, and then there's more infantry attack, and then there's a little bit more defense, but mainly also territory bonuses and stuff like that. All of that is going to be basic attack, and that is definitely something you should keep in mind. So a lot of the stats you get with infantry and just really any troop type in general are already attack heavy, which is why I don't like the attack heavy stats. And even you saw there with the archer, the alliance technology there is also a lot of defense available there so health is definitely the most coveted and rarest of the three main stat types and that's why in my opinion the 222 set running the kvk helmet kvk weapon running the hope cloak and the sacred grips and then running the leadership greaves and leadership boots is your best set of equipment so now that we've looked over the sets of equipment and I've come to a conclusion of what I think the best one is, being the 222 set, even though it's giving you 7% less stats than your typical infantry set, I still think it is the best and that's why I'm going to give you the investment order for both this set of equipment and your typical infantry set. So I'm going to start off by going over the typical set if you choose to run this set, which is again on screen just for a little bit. This set of equipment is going to have a fairly simple investment order to follow. Really, you just pick up anything that's going to give you as much defense as possible. So the KVK helmet is a really good first pickup just to get access to. So the second you're able to buy this helmet, I recommend buying it over the KVK weapon. Because the infantry epic weapon, I mean, it is literally just the same as the legendary one, except it's missing about 8% stats. But when we look at the infantry helmet, you're going to get a change from infantry attack into infantry defense. So picking up the Helm of the Conqueror is definitely a good first move, and it will be the most impactful for your account in terms of stat changes. Also, the Hope Cloak is a decent pickup considering that the infantry piece before that has also only got attack. So whichever one you can get first, whether it be the Hope Cloak or the Helm of the Conqueror, is going to be your main focus. 
After that, I would recommend going and getting the Boots of the Eternal Empire because for infantry, once again, their previous set boots are in defense as well. So you're going to get a nice just general stat upgrade and then you can go and pick up the infantry gloves because the previous ones are also defense, but the Eternal Empire gloves will give you a set bonus. Really, you can do these in any order. You can get the Van Braces of the Eternal Empire or the Boots of the Eternal Empire interchangeably, but I would recommend getting them as your third and fourth pieces of equipment. For your fifth and sixth, for your fifth piece of equipment, I recommend getting the Hammer of the Sun and Moon. The reason we're doing it so late is because A, it's extremely expensive, and like I said before, the Infantry Epic Weapon has a not similar amount of stats. It is definitely weaker, but it isn't ridiculously weak, and they are the same stat type. It's going from attack into attack, and infantry weapons, especially the KVK one, can be difficult to get, and I would rather get the Helm of the Conqueror before I get the KVK weapon. After I've gotten this KVK weapon though, that's when you'll finally upgrade from the Kurak's Humility into the Eternal Knight, just because this is going to be one of the bigger, or maybe a bit of a downgrade almost, just because you're going from health into infantry defense. So do keep that in mind, I definitely recommend going from Kurak's Humility into the Eternal Knight Pants, just because at that point it is a stat upgrade, but it's a very minor one and it is not the best. Now, if you're deciding to go with the 222 set, which I still think is the best because you get access to some amount of health and it's a bit more spread out and a bit more equal in terms of the stats you get, the recommended investment order, in my opinion, you're going to start off by going with Helm of the Conqueror as well. I think getting this is the first priority for most people. Just because, once again, you're going from attack into defense, and that's a really good upgrade. And it's a lot of stats. Especially because recently they changed the price for legendary equipment. It's going to be, for KVK pieces, the exact same price as any normal equipment in terms of the overall material cost. So just picking up the KVK helmet, instant power boost for your infantry marches. It's a good amount of stats. And considering that these infantry pieces don't have any set bonuses, there's nothing to really worry about with it there. So picking up Helm of the Conqueror, always, in my opinion, a first priority. After that, you can go with Hope Cloak or you can go with the Leadership Boots. And I don't think either one is a crazy option, especially considering before you're looking at some amount of defense on the Frost Treads. I think when they're talented, it will be around 7.5%, but then you'll change that into 6% health. So that's an upgrade. I would say either getting the Glorious Goddess or getting the Hope Cloak is a good idea because they're both going to change a lower stat into a better one. Personally, I would get the Hope Cloak before I get the Leadership Boots, but they are not a bad choice if you do end up getting an event that will let you get boots before you get an event that will give you the Hope Cloak. Or if you're just struggling to get it out of, let's say, maybe the Lucerne Scrolls, if you're spending money, you can always go with the Greaves before it. After that, for your fourth upgrade, I would just go with the Sacred Grips. It is a very small upgrade over the Seth's Brutality, but it is a fairly okay upgrade nonetheless. For your fifth upgrade, and make sure you don't do this until you've already got your Greaves of the Glorious Goddess, you can go grab your Shasus of the Glorious Goddess. The reason we do this as a fifth upgrade, you might be thinking, it's got troop health, why wouldn't you grab it earlier? And the reason is because, well, the Kurak's Humility is the same amount of health, but it is only going to be a very small upgrade if you're looking into getting the Shasus of the Glorious Goddess, because you're going to get some troop defense. It may even be considered a downgrade, so if you're not able to talent the Shasus of the Glorious Goddess, or you're not even going to even awaken it at all, like if you're not even going to take it to tier 1, I would recommend just maybe sticking with that Kurak's Humility until you're able to refine this or awaken it a little bit, because Shasus of the Glorious Goddess is technically a small downgrade over the Kurak's Humility, because these pair of pants already are giving you 8% health, and the Shasus is giving you 8% as well. So do keep that in mind, that is definitely a thing you should note, but if you have the boots, you will get a 3% troop defense bonus, which in my opinion does make it slightly worth it, and once you awaken the pants, you also get a base stat health increase for your troops as well. You get plus 3 base health, which in my opinion is worth it, over the Kurak Humility. So as a 5th or a 6th upgrade, you can grab the Shasus, but that is why it is much further down, where usually it would be one of the first upgrades you do. For infantry, it is one of the last. Finally, you will get the Hammer of the Sun and Moon, because once again, very expensive upgrade. It's going to take a long time to save up, and it is only a small stat increase over the normal, in the normal weapon. It's not even a stat change. So that's why Hammer of Sun and Moon, and also the Leg Shasts of the Glorious Goddess, 
can both be grabbed at different times, and once again, they can be upgraded into interchangeably. So now that we've made it to the end of today's video, I just wanna ask you guys, what do you think about my ideas for infantry equipment? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you think that they are okay? Or do you think that they are a little bit risky? I am quite interested to know what you think. Personally, I still believe the 222 set right here, which is the one I've recommended for archers as well, is the set of equipment you would go with for infantry. Just picking up those two leadership pieces, it puts you in a really good position and it kind of just overall makes good sense for infantry. So let me know what you think in the comments down below with your infantry sets of equipment. Do you think just sticking with that typical set of equipment is fair and I gave the upgrade order for that? Or do you think just going with the 222 seems to be the new meta for infantry? Picking up those leadership pieces, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I will be on a school immersion, so I won't be able to respond. And if I do respond, it will probably be a couple days late. But I will definitely read through them, and I am definitely quite interested. Now, I just want to say I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.